There are several ways to go about animating blinds on a window, uh, kind of like what we have here in this image, these window blinds. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few ways. I'm going to close that down. And for starters, let's go ahead and create some blinds. Uh, to do this, I'm going to, there's several ways of doing that as well, but I'm going to go ahead and use spline draw. And in the side view here, I'm just going to make a little bit of a curve, uh, roughly in the same curve as I've seen most uh, window blinds something like that. Okay, commit to that. And right now this is a spline, but if I extrude it, I'm going to move this over, and if I go to multiply, extrude, and I extrude it, it'll automatically convert it into polygons. Go ahead and center that, and we'll call that one of the the pieces that make up the blinds. Now it's single-sided, and if I go into texture mode, we'll see it's also faceted. Uh, I, I'm not going to add more geometry, but I am going to turn smoothing on, and I'm going to make it double-sided. So I'm going to go over to the surface editor, and let's give it a color. I'll just use this blue color. I'll turn smoothing on, and I'll make it double-sided. You don't have to do these things, but I think it'll make it look better, and then when we start rotating the blinds, uh, we'll be able to see the back side as well. Actually, while we're in here, why don't we go ahead and give it some specularity and tighten up the glossiness. By raising the glossiness, I'm kind of tightening up, making the spec hit smaller on the surface. Okay. And now all I need, of course, these are going to be <laughs> really short blinds. I'm not going to make them really long. It'll make us easier to, to get in nice and close. Let's go ahead and make a few more of these. Now, I could select it. Hit Control C for copy, Control V for paste, T for move, and move it up, and do that several times. I'm actually going to delete that. Uh, what I think would be easier, and we can also take a look at another tool, would be under the Multiply tab to choose Clone. And let's make um, let's make five clones, and let's separate them by uh, one meter. Okay. So what it does is it evenly spaces these one meter apart. So that means that these are really big blinds, but that's okay. Uh, and now all I have to do, so that I can animate these independent of each other, I'm going to go ahead and separate these into different layers. So I'm going to select a few polygons on each one of these except for the top. Use the close bracket for select connect. Cut using control, uh, control X. Go to layer 2. Paste. Grab these, select connect, cut, paste. Grab these, select connect, cut, paste. Grab these, select connect, cut, paste. And grab this last one, select connect, cut, and paste. If I use the numeric numbers above the letters, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I have six layers. Each layer has a separate blind. Now in order for me to rotate this properly I'm going to need to change the pivot point. I could do that in layout but I'm going to go ahead and do it in modeler. I think it's it's quicker and it'll be saved with the object file instead of saved with the scene. So I'm going to move over to the view tab and choose the pivot tool and by default each layer has the pivot point at the origin. Now, when you move the pivot point, it's not for the object, it's for the layer. So if you were to copy or if you were to cut and paste this object into another layer, the pivot point uh, does not go with it. It is it is per layer. So that's something to, to keep in mind. I'm just going to move this right here, move to layer 2, move the pivot point for layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, layer 5, and layer 6. So I've moved the pivot point for all of my individual blinds. Okay, so now I think we're pretty much ready to move over to layout. So I'm going to go ahead and save this object. So file, save object, and let's call it blinds. And I like to give a version number, so it's a 0, 1 save and let's send that over to layout. I'm going to go ahead and select this light and just move it out of the way 
and let's zoom in and take a look at what we have here. So we have our blinds and if we wanted to animate these all we really need to do is I'm going to middle mouse drag and grab these Y for rotate and I could rotate all of these at the same time just by clicking on one of these handles when they're all selected I'm going to undo um, I could just select one and rotate that or I could set up a rig uh, an animation rig for this that would allow me to just move one thing and it'll take care of everything uh, to do that let's go ahead and add a null object so under items add null let's call this uh, blinds opener opener uh, I'm going to switch over here to the edit and instead of the standard starburst let's make it let's make it a ring and let's have that uh, running down the X okay T for move and here's our ring now if we use the the standard null and wanted to go and change change it after we've already made it all we have to do is go to the objects properties and under the geometry tab add custom object choose item shape or if we've made it and we want to change it let's go ahead and double click we could change this say to a box if we want but I'm gonna change it back to a ring and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a label so that we can without having to click on it know what it is I'm gonna call this opener okay and it labels it right there and we'll keep the rest of the settings there so I want to use this when I animate this I want to open up these blinds to do that we could write an expression so let's go over to the graph editor and in the graph editor we're gonna say that when we rotate the blinds in the pitch we want to drive all of the the actual blinds to rotate so I'm gonna write a new expression so under the expressions new let's call this blinds open let's call it opener just so we're using the same naming convention and for the value I'm going to delete that come over to the pitch here right click and choose a pin to expression so all I did was take this channel and place it down here in the value okay so that's the expression we're going to work with let's go ahead and let's go ahead and apply it I'm going to open up the blinds object and double click on the pitch and click apply and I'm going to do that for each one. So close that one, go to 2, pitch, apply. Close that, go to 3, pitch, apply. Close that, go to 4, pitch, apply. Close that, go to 5, double click on the pitch and apply. Close that, go to 6, double click on the pitch and apply. You'll see that it's put a little dot next to it you'll also know if you got all of them by clicking on the expressions tab here we can see that the blinds opener expression has six attached okay that would be all six of our blinds I'll go ahead and close this in order for our expressions to work in real time we need to make sure that auto key is on just so that we can see it happening in real time so I'm gonna click Y for rotate if I don't want to worry about the bank and the heading I can come down here and click on H and B and you'll see I got dotted lines here that allows it me to, it basically locks me out of those channels so all I have is when I rotate my opener I can close these or swing them back the other way now they can start cutting through each other and if I want to limit that all I have to do let me undo so we're back to here I'm gonna go ahead and hit M for motions and I'm gonna say that uh, for the pitch I want to set some limits so I'm gonna put a check next to pitch limits and for the min I'm gonna say for the minimum I'm gonna say right here so I'm gonna copy from down here I'm gonna control C come over here and paste that value and then for the maximum, I'm going to go the exact opposite way and say right there. So I'm going to copy 89.60, copy, and paste. Okay, go ahead and close that down. And we can see we've got this, this screened look right here. It's showing me 
no matter how far I, I, I'm trying to push my mouse, I'm trying to rotate this even more, but it locks off there and it'll lock off there. Okay, so what, where this comes in really handy is that say I was zoomed out and I wanted to rotate my blinds and I didn't want, and I couldn't see if they were cutting through. Well, if I have my limits here, well, I pretty much know that I'm not going beyond the limits that I originally set up. So that's one way of using a simple controller with expressions to drive the opening or the rotation of my blinds here. What if we didn't want to have this rotation handle and we wanted a drawstring? Say we wanted to be able to pull on a drawstring and have those have that drawstring affect these blinds. Well, let's let's take a look at setting that up. It's very similar to what we've done, but uh, just in case if that's the kind of blind setup you're looking for, we'll go over to the graph editor and I'm just going to remove this uh, this one expression I'm just going to delete it are you sure you want to delete this yes we're going to write a new one and uh, okay I've got that off let me go make a drawstring instead of using this just in case if we want to go back to this it's easy to set up but I'll leave this right here let's make another uh, null that we're going to use as our drawstring so I'm going to add a null and I'm going to call this draw string and instead of editing it here let's go ahead and do it the other way just so you can see that so okay here's my here's my drawstring and let's just place it say right here and I'm going to go ahead and customize this null. I don't have to but it's kinda nice to be able to dress it up just a little bit so I'm gonna go to object properties under the geometry tab, add custom object, I'm going to choose item shape, double click, I'm going to close that window, and we'll change we'll make this a box and we'll label it uh, draw string. Okay, so we got it right there. And now what I want to do is is lock off X and Z so that I get these dotted lines and now I can only drag it up and down okay and I want when I drag this up and down it'll be like pulling on that cord on the blinds to rotate each blind to open and close the blinds so let's go over to the graph editor and for draw string y I'm gonna make a new expression call this draw string and for the value, let's append to expression, right here, append to expression, and let's apply that to each one. So I'm going to go to, and I'm not going to, I use the Y channel for the expression, but I'm actually going to apply it to the rotation just like we did before. So pitch, pitch, I'm going to apply, I'm just double clicking and then clicking apply. Double clicking drops the channel up here and then allows me to apply the expression. Apply. Okay, and I'll go ahead and close this down. And now when I move this up and down, you can see that it's rotating that. But man, I got to really move it way off screen because the, the value for moving it uh, isn't as high like say I move it um, just say uh, two meters well two meters is only going to be two degrees for the rotation channel well that's not going to work for me so what I can do is go back to the graph editor and in this expression I'm going to say I want that I want the Y position for the for the drawstring null times let's do times 15 okay so now when I close this now you can see it's I don't have to go way off screen like I did before okay so I can have it so that when I pull up on the string it opens the blinds a little bit I can close them this way or I can close them this way so that would be the drawstring setup if if it doesn't have to be based off of a drawstring I'd probably prefer this opener here uh, but this is two different ways that you can go about uh, setting up an animation rig to speed up the animation process of animating blinds.